All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at a problem called the postage stamp problem. And um, let me read it first, and then I'll talk about it a little bit. So it says the post office only has stamps of the denominations five cents and seven cents. Seven cents. Uh, basically, what that means is they have some stamps that are five cents, and you see a picture of one there, and they have some stamps that are seven cents. What amounts of postage can you buy? What values would be impossible, not possible, and what would be the greatest impossible value? So let me kind of give you first a rundown of what's happening here. We're saying that you can buy stamps that are five cents. You can buy stamps that are seven cents. You can combine the stamps in any way. We're trying to figure out if you can combine these values, would there be any values that aren't possible? And then what would be the greatest of those impossible values? Now, I've given this to a lot of kids before, and this problem usually makes kids think like, what is the biggest impossible value? It's going to be a giant number that we're never going to be able to find. I'm going to tell you that it's probably much, 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 much smaller than you would imagine. Now, let's kind of look at what this problem says. So we have five. Uh, which is we have five cent stamps and we have seven cent stamps. Now, right off the start, you probably could start to list some, uh, some possibilities just by thinking about the multiples of these numbers. So, for example, if I were thinking about uh, some possibilities, I know it would be possible to make uh, 10 cents in stamps because I can do two fives. Uh, if I just count by fives, I would be able to do 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. All of those would be possible because I could just buy a bunch of five cent stamps. The same thing happens with seven cents. I could do seven, I could do 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, and so on, right? Now, we're focused more here not on things that are possible. These things are all possible by using five and seven cents, but rather things that are impossible. Now, before we talk about how we could start combining five and seven cent stamps, I want to go with the, um, the impossible values that are the easiest to find probably. Now, if the smallest value of stamp I can purchase is five cents, then you might notice that one cent is not going to be possible. No possible way. Uh, two is not going to be possible. Three, no. Four, no. And a five cent stamp, obviously, is because we have a five cent stamp. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about impossible values. All four of those are impossible. Now, we are looking for the largest impossible value. Now, we've already started to look at numbers uh, where we're combining fives, fives, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Every multiple of five would be possible. Every multiple of seven would be possible. Now, the one thing that we haven't talked about here is what if we started combining five and sevens? So, for example, we said that our multiples of five were possible, our multiples of seven were possible. What about fives and sevens? So, for example, if I had five plus seven, that gives me 12. That wasn't a multiple of five. That wasn't a multiple of seven. But it's a multiple of five and seven combined. Uh, uh, I could then take 12 and add five, which would give me 17. Or I can take 12 and add seven more, which would give me 19. You're going to notice we can make a lot of different combinations here that you might not have thought that you could make before. Now, in my opinion, I think the easiest strategy, I'm going to give you a couple things you might try here. You really want to organize your information. Um, so one thing that you might try to do is make a table. And it can have a different number of columns. Um, I'm going to start off by thinking about multiples of fives and sevens and multiples then of fives and sevens combined, writing all of those things down and start to find what are numbers that I haven't yet achieved 
and see if it's possible. So, for example, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. 7, 14, 21, and so on. 5 plus 7 is 12. So then if 12 is possible, 24 must be possible. Counting by 12s, 36 must be possible, and so on. Now, that's a possibility. That's something that you, uh, that you definitely could do. Um, in addition to that, I find that a lot of people like to just go one number at a time. So looking at two columns, one that is impossible and one that is possible. You could start really small. You could start with one's impossible, two's impossible, three's impossible, four's impossible. Five is possible. Six is impossible. And going and listing every single number. Now, this problem, I'm going to give you that hint again, that it seems difficult at first. It seems like you're never going to find the answer. I promise you that answer is going to come much faster than you think. My suggestion here is make sure that you're looking for patterns. Look, look for what stands out to you because something is eventually going to stand out to you and it's going to make this problem significantly easier. So that's all the information I'm going to give you on it today. Good luck with this problem. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys do.